Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories, wise tales from storytellers around the world, which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello, Super Great Kids, and how are you? I hope you had a happy week. My reason for being cheerful is that so many of you have been sending in stonkingly good pictures. A lot of them for our birthday drawing competition. So, if you sent us a picture recently, thank you so much. Story Owl and Super Great David and I are going to have a lovely time looking at them all together. It's going to be very hard to judge, though. They're all so very good. What larks! Another thing which makes me very happy is that we've met a new storyteller from Kenya in East Africa. Her name is Wangari the Storyteller and she's going to share a how and why story today about how fruit trees came to be in the world. Just before we have our story, I wonder how many different types of fruit you can think of while we have a quick word with the grown-ups. Are you ready? Off you go. Hello, super great kids. I'm back. How many different types of fruit did you think of? If you got over five, that's pretty good. If you got over ten, well, that's splendiferous. Did you remember mangoes? Papayas? Mmm, black currants? Ooh, excellent. Right, time for our new storyteller. Let's give a warm welcome to Wangari Grace. Hello, Super Great Kids. My name is Wangari the Storyteller. I live in a city called Nairobi. And Nairobi is the capital city of my country, Kenya. And Kenya is found in East Africa. In fact, we are just right next to the Indian Ocean. Now, I love fruits. I love fruits. Do you love fruits? What is your favorite fruit? Mine? Mm-hmm. My favorite fruit is a pineapple. I love pineapples. And you? Did I hear you say mango? Oh, and grapes? Ah, whether it's a banana or a melon or an apple, all these are just delicious. Now, do you know how fruits came to be? Ah, if you don't, well, listen, because I have a story and I will tell you the origin of all the fruits that we love to eat. But before we got into the story, I want to teach you something in my language, which is Kiswahili. In Kiswahili, we call a story hadithi. And when we want to call a story to come and be told, because of course you have to ask the story if it wants to be told, mm -hmm. the storyteller will say hadithi hadithi, which is story story. And you, the listener, should say hadithi njo. Hadithi njo. Can you try that? Hadithi njo. So I will say hadithi hadithi and you will say hadithi njo. And you have to say it as loudly as you can so the story can agree to be told. Let's go. Hadithi hadithi. Hadithi njo. Hadithi hadithi. Hadithi njo. And yes, I can feel the story is here with us. And here it goes. One day, Tortoise was having a deep, deep sleep. And as he slept, he had a dream. 
And in his dream, he saw a big tree with big, strong branches. And on the branches, he saw something that he had never seen before. Well, if he had known what he was seeing, he would have seen a big fruit tree with many fruits, mangoes and apples and bananas and strawberries, all hanging from the branches of this one amazing tree. And when he woke up in the morning, he thought that it was a really, really weird kind of dream. And he called all the animals for a meeting. And the animals came and they sat down, just like you are sitting now. And he told them about this tree of his dream. My dear friends, you won't believe what I dreamt last night. I saw this, this strange tree with big, strong branches. And on its branches, I saw all manner of things to eat. I saw things that call themselves mangoes and bananas and strawberries and grapes and, and coconuts. They were all hanging from one magic tree. Now you can imagine the animals who were sitting there listening to this. And the lion was one of them. And he said, oh, come on, tortoise. That is just a dream. And we can't eat dreams now, can we? No, 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 said tortoise. It wasn't a dream. It is true. I know. I, the tortoise, will go and visit Grandmother Coco. And Grandmother Coco will tell me where this magic fruit tree grows. Grandmother Coco? That was Mr. Lion. Come on, tortoise. She lives so far away and you walk so slowly. Stay back. I will go. And with that, the lion set off to go and visit Grandmother Coco. And when he got there, he explained to her about this tree that Tortoise had dreamt about. And Grandmother Coco listened very carefully. Ah, my dear lion, I have heard of that tree. Yes, it is a real tree. And the name of that tree is Omumborogonga Gabango tree. And it grows at the center of the big forest. If you want to find the tree, go back just like you have come. If you remember the name of the tree, you will find it. And if you want the fruits to fall, you have to call out the name very loudly. And the fruits will just fall down by themselves. The lion could imagine this big fruit tree with fruits of all kinds. And he imagined that, well, he was already king of the jungle, but finding this magic fruit tree would make him even more popular. And he was about to just leave and dash towards the forest when Grandmother Coco said, Hey, 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 my dear lion, one thing. When you start this journey, you should not look back. And the lion set off. And as he walked, he sang to himself, Omumboro gonga gabango tree. Omumboro gonga gabango tree. Omumboro gonga gabango tree. Oh, he imagined finding this tree that had all these different fruits. And he imagined just how popular he was going to be in the forest. And he walked and walked and he smiled to himself as he sang along on the way. But he looked back. And when he looked back, oh, 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 he hit his foot on an anthill. And he was so angry. You silly anthill, what are you doing on my path? Can't you see I'm on a very important mission? When I come here next, I don't want to find you here. You have... What? What is the name of the tree? What is the name of the tree? What is the name of the tree? My dear friends, can any one of you help the lion to remember the name of the tree? Yes. Who wants to try? Uh, not really. That's not the name. Well, to find the tree, you have to remember the correct name. Does someone else want to try? Ah, no, no, no. <laughs> you, my friends, just like the lion, could not remember the name. And the lion was so embarrassed, and he went back to where the other animals were waiting. 
The next one to go was the elephant. And before the elephant could go very far, the lion called out, Elephant, mind the anthill. And the elephant went to Grandmother Coco. And Grandmother Coco explained once again, My dear elephant, the name of that tree is Omomboro Gonga Gabango tree. It is found at the center of the forest. But remember, this is very important that when you begin this journey, you should not look back. Now, you all know the elephant, right? What do you know about him? Oh yeah, he is really very, very huge. He is the biggest land animal. Ah, he is very clever. Ah, what was that? Yes, he has a really long nose. And do you know that the elephant has one of the sharpest memories in the animal kingdom? Oh yes, he does. The elephant never forgets. And he too set off singing to himself. Oh, he was so happy with himself. He saw the anthill and walked away from it and continued to sing. Oh, he smiled to himself as he walked. He danced from one side of the road to the other side. Oh, he imagined all the fruit that he was going to eat before the other animals came. And he was really enjoying himself and swinging from side to side that he also looked back. And when he looked back, ouch, 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 oh, oh, the elephant stepped on a sharp thorn and it pricked him hard. And he had to sit down to remove the thorn. Ouch, it was really painful. And when finally he thought about it, what was the name of the tree? What was it? What was the name? Uh, can you guys help? Yes, yes, yes. You over there. Omumbaka Banka? No, no, no. But well, you've got 60% of the name. But you know, for us to find the tree, you have to get it 100% correct. Let's see if there's anyone here who has a huge memory like we say elephants do. Aha, uh -huh, over there. Uh, oh no, you brought us back to 40%. <laughs> well, don't beat yourself, guys, because you see, even the elephant with his huge memory could not remember the name. And he just went back to where the animals were waiting. Many animals took this journey. The hyena took the journey to go and look for the tree. And before the hyena could go very far, the lion called out, Hyena, mind the anthill. And the elephant said, Hyena, mind the thorn. And the hyena went and got the instructions from Grandmother Coco. And he went past the anthill, past the thorn. And I'm not really sure if he smelled some food somewhere and began sniffing from one side to the other because he too looked back. And when he looked back, he fell in a pool of water. The animals even sent a bird. Now, do you know who the biggest bird in the bird kingdom is? Yes, it is the ostrich. And the ostrich too took this journey. And before he could go very far, the lion called out, Ostrich, mind the anthill. And the elephant said, Ostrich, mind the... Yes, mind the thorn. And the hyena said, Ostrich. Mind the pool of water. And the ostrich went and got the same instructions. And he began running very fast past the anthill, past the thorn, past the pool of water. But he also looked back. And when he looked back, he had a loud sound. And looking down, saw a big snake and he jumped. And when he jumped, the answer jumped from his head. Now, the animals were really getting annoyed at this. They thought that it was actually a joke and there was no way that a magic tree like that could exist in their forest and they had never seen it. And they were almost going home 
when they heard a small voice saying, I will go. And they looked around and saw that it was the tortoise. Yes, I, the tortoise, will go and find that magic fruit tree that I dreamt about. <laughs> and I can tell you for sure, the animals laughed and laughed and laughed. Why do you think they were laughing? Yeah, of course. Tortoise is so slow. And did he really, really, really think that where the lion, the king of the forest, had failed, and the elephant, who has the biggest memory in the animal kingdom, had failed, and the hyena who eats anything, and even the ostrich had failed, that he, tortoise, could actually make it? But the animals had, uh, in the forest, passed a new constitution not so long ago. So out of democracy, they allowed tortoise to go. And before he went very far, the lion called out, Tortoise, mind the anthill. And the elephant said, Tortoise, mind the thorn. And the hyena said, Tortoise, mind the pool of water. And the ostrich said, Tortoise, uh, mind the s s snake. And Tortoise began the long walk to grandmother's place. Well, Tortoise knew that indeed he could forget. But there was one thing about him that he was really good at following instructions. So he walked even more slowly than he usually did. And after many days, he arrived at Grandmother Coco's house. And Grandmother Coco, just like most of our grandmothers, was very patient and explained, My dear tortoise, listen and listen very carefully. The name of that tree is Omumborogonga Gabango tree. Omumborogonga Gabango tree. Omumborogonga Gabango tree. Now, children, can you try and say it with me? Slowly, so you try it in parts. All right? Can we say Omumborogonga Gabango tree? Omumborogonga, Gabango tree. And, tortoise, remember, this is very important, that when you start this journey, you should not do what? You should not look back. And tortoise said thank you to Grandmother Coco and walked to the center of the forest, singing to himself. And now, my dear friends, I would like you guys to sing with me. And we will see if we can really get to find this magic fruit tree. All you have to do is repeat what I say. Do we have a deal? Okay, let's try it out. Omumboro gonga gabango tree. Omumboro gonga gabango tree. Omumboro gonga gabango tree. Tortoise walked and sang as he went. Omumboro gonga gabango tree. Omumboro gonga gabango tree. Oh, he found the anthill and he saw it and he walked away from it and he did not stop singing. Omumboro gonga gabango tree. He saw the thorn and walked away from it and still kept on singing to himself. Omumboro gonga gabango tree. Oh, saw the pool of water and walked as far away as he could and he still sang along. Omumboro gonga gabango tree ooh, had a big hissing sound and he put his head and his legs in his shell and lay as still as he could. And when the snake went on its way, he too appeared and continued walking, singing to himself. Omumboro gonga gabango tree Omumboro gonga gabango tree. Omumboro gonga gabango tree. Ooh. And soon he was at the center of the forest. And all the animals were waiting to see if he could actually remember the name. And Tortoise stood there for a while. And he took a deep breath. And now, my super great kids, I think all of us are ready. 
When I count to three, I would like you guys to help me to call out the name of the tree as loudly as you can. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. One, two, three. Omumboro Gonga Gabango tree. And believe it or not, right in front of their eyes appeared a big tree with big strong branches and on the branches there were all kinds of fruits and there were mangoes and bananas and strawberries and all these fruits were growing from one big tree and tortoise called out even more loudly and let's go one two three omumboro gonga gabango tree and the fruits just fell down by themselves. And the animals took the fruits. A mango here, a grape there, a kiwi there, a watermelon, and they ate the fruits. And I can tell you, they tasted things that they had never tasted before. And as they ate all the different fruits, their mouths felt as if they were in heaven. And when they were done, Tortoise called everyone to order and said, my dear friends, let each one take a seed from each of the fruits that you have eaten and go home with it. And when the rain comes down, please plant the seeds and watch them grow. And this time round, the animals did not argue with the tortoise, no. Each one of them took the different seeds they had and they carried the seeds with them back home, each to the part of the forest that they came from. And they planted the seeds. And when the rain came down, the seeds grew up to become different kinds of fruit trees. Oh, yes. This time round, all the fruits were not growing on one huge magical fruit tree. Mm -mm. Now, each fruit tree produced different kinds of fruits. And that is why today, when you find different fruits, they are not found on one big Omomboro Gonga Gabango tree. No, but they are growing on different fruit trees. And so, my dear friends, the next time you enjoy your favorite fruit, whether it's a banana or a melon or a grape or an apple, whichever fruit you like, do not forget the name of this amazing tree that made all this happen. Omumboro gonga gabango tree. Omumboro gonga gabango tree. Omumboro gonga gabango tree. Oh, thank you for that story, Wangari. I love the fact that we now know how to start a story in Kiswahili. That is also a really great story for you to retell. See if you can tell your version using your favourite fruits and animals. Oh, and can you think of another story where the tortoise is really slow and steady and does better than other animals who are fast and careless? That's right! the Greek story about the race between hare and tortoise. Tortoise is often seen as old and wise in many cultures, a bit like our story owl. And now, some thank yous and hoo -hoo 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 hellos to our very own owlets who've recently hopped into our nest and joined the Owlets Club. And hello to new owlets Roisin and Liam from Cork in Ireland. And and hello to new owlets Roisin and Liam from Cork in Ireland. Roisin and Liam are twins who've just turned seven. They think that super great kids' stories are the best in the universe. Liam's favourite story is about the four dragons and Roisin likes how the leopard got its spots. They live near the loch in Cork where the legend of the loch story came from. And when they pass it, they listen out 
for the bells and the voices and the music from the party going on underneath the water. <laughs> Just lovely. And hoo, 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 to new owlets, Edith, who will be seven in November, and Josephine, who will be two this October. They live in San Francisco in California and listen to our stories whenever they're cooking dinner. And hoo, 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 to loyal fans and new owlets, Milo and Herbie. They listen to super great kids' stories every bedtime and particularly like the sharing song. Milo says his favourite story is How the Phoenix Got Its Bright Feathers. And Herbie thinks his might be Nora and the Aki Fruit. I hope you're enjoying the scary stories too now that you've joined us on Patreon. And hoo, 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 to Isaac, who is six and from Aberfeldy in the Scottish Highlands. Hello too to his three cats, Shaq, CJ and Gideon. I wonder if they like listening to stories too. Probably not the scary ones. And hoo, 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 and hello to seven-year-old Emmett in Kentucky in the US who loves the word searches. He listens every week and his favourites are the scary stories. He thinks his very favourite scary story is the ghost of the bloody finger. His little sister Evelyn is two and she enjoys Molly and the skeleton. Wow, Evelyn, that's very brave of you. And welcome all of you to the club. I hope you enjoy the extra stories and the owlet letters. If you'd like to join the club, look on our website and click on the Patreon or Apple link. And thanks to, to Chairman Expo in the UK and Rumi and Sonia in the US for your kind and thoughtful reviews on Apple Podcasts. Now, lots of you have been getting out your paints and crayons and sending us some phenomenal story pictures. We'll announce the winners of the How and Why competition next week. But for now, here's a few of my picks which aren't part of the competition. Rosemary is almost seven and lives in Lincoln, Nebraska in the US and has sent us a wonderful picture of the River Mama story. I really like your River Mama rising up from the water with her beautiful hair flowing behind her. Thank you, Rosemary. A very special picture. And thanks to Mira from Jackson, Michigan in the US, who has been listening to Super Great Kids stories for two years now and has heard every story. Thanks for sharing your imaginative picture of Baba Yaga looking out of her house. She looks extremely angry, screaming from her window, and she's so upset that her long, straggly hair is standing on end. Yikes. And thanks to Buffy, who is seven, and Rose, who is ten, from Staffordshire, here in the UK, for sending your delightful pictures. Rose, I love the way you've drawn simply the ghost's hand, with the one bloody finger looking red and very painful. Very effective. And Buffy, thanks for your portrait of Story Owl. Such neat feathers and tufty eyebrows too. Very witty. If you'd like to see some of these super great drawings or competition entries, or send us your own picture of this week's magical tree with all the fruit growing on it, go to our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash super great kids stories. And news about a storytelling festival in Northern Ireland. Next week, it's half-term holiday for some of you. If you're in Northern Ireland, check out the Glens Storytelling Festival. It's held in Ballymena, County Antrim, from Thursday, October the 19th until Sunday, October the 22nd. More details on our Facebook page. Kate Corkery will be telling stories there, along with Liz Weir and lots of other gifted storytellers. So do go along if you can. That's it for now. Have a happy week listening to and telling your own stories. See you soon. This podcast was recorded at Wardour Studios in London. <laughs> <laughs>